The world's first commercial nuclear power station began to take shape at Sellafield on the coast of northwest England in April 1953. At the time, electricity was generated by turbines driven by steam heated by coal. But in their research on the atomic bomb, scientists had discovered that the intense heat created when atoms and neutrons were split could be harnessed in a reactor to produce an almost unlimited supply of energy. In the years that followed, others worked on the idea of turning this energy into electricity. In Britain, Calder Hall was the fruit of that research. Originally, Calder Hall's prime task was to produce plutonium for military purposes. Commercial electricity would be a spin-off, largely as an experiment. But as the work progressed and defence requirements changed, the military side dropped away, and efforts were concentrated on generating a workable flow of power for the national grid. The building of Calder Hall was a massive engineering feat. Inside the reactor, the fuel they used was natural uranium metal, encased in a container made of magnesium alloy known as Magnox, which gave its name to this type of operation. As the Queen met the engineering team, she was assured that the experience in safety and general reactor physics, which the scientists here had gained, would be passed on to others who were already beginning to design similar nuclear power stations in Italy, Japan and many other countries. On October the 17th, 1956, the Queen pressed the switch, which fed electricity produced by nuclear energy into the national grid for the first time. That I now open Calder Hall, Britain's first atomic power station. It was a modest enough start. The electricity produced by Calder Hall was enough to meet the needs of a city with a population of some 80 to 90,000. But in Britain, eight more power stations followed, and as the years passed, nuclear power grew to provide about a sixth of the world's electricity, and as much as a third of Europe's. France, for example, gets three quarters of her electricity from nuclear stations. In Britain, it's about a fifth. But as the 20th century draws to an end, the enthusiasm with which the scientists showed off their new toy to the Queen is tempered by problems about what to do with Calder Hall and every other old nuclear power station once they pass their shelf life. All that, though, was far from their minds on that day nearly 40 years ago when it all began. <laughs>